the Mini. Now this is one car that above all else is about making a fashion statement. For instance, you don't buy it for its practicality because its boot is a little bit titchy. On the flip side, that does mean that you're gonna spend less cash on clothes shopping. Uh, this, this is not my car. However, while the boot is small, it does have some nice features. For instance, you can lock this false floor up like that, then remove the parcel shelf, put it under there, raise the boot floor, fold down the seats, and you get a flat load bay, which is pretty good. Now, what's not so good is how you have to get into the back because these seats just don't seem to slide very far forward, so it's a bit of a struggle. I mean, look at this to get in. When you're in, the space isn't actually as bad as you think. Headroom's pretty good. You've got some big windows. The issue really is not your knees even, it's the shins. The seat is just so tight to your shins, so you have to do a deal with your driver, get them to lift their seat up, and then you can just about be fine. Now, if you want to see a bit more about this car's practicality, then click up there for our video where we see how much we can fit in this car's boot, whether you can fit a child seat nice and easily in this car, and, well, what it's like for two adult rear passengers. For me, it's just about okay. Now, the Mini has always been a great-looking car, but in my opinion, this third-generation model just... It doesn't look quite as good as the previous two generations. It's, it's a bit more maxi than Mini, but it's still got that very distinctive characteristic styling and some nice details. And that continues when you're inside the car as well. So I'll just slide this back so I can get in. There are no cars which have an interior with this much character. It's such a great looking thing and it really does feel like a premium product in here. I guess my only complaint is the fact that these storage spaces, while well, they do seem rather mini. Now you shouldn't be misled by these cutesy graphics on the infotainment screen because it's, it's actually, as far as I'm concerned, the best in the business. You can actually see our full review of it by clicking up there and get another look around this cabin. If I were you, I would upgrade that to the full sat nav because it's brilliant but you've got to be very careful with options on the mini for instance this one has five grand's worth of options and if you get too carried away the price of a mini can escalate so much that you're going to have to remortgage your house still it's a mini and it has bags of personality and quite a few fascinating features here's five of them the pedestrian protection system raises the bonnet slightly in a split second to reduce head injuries an led light ring around the instruments changes color depending on which mode you're in there's Isofix fittings for a child seat in the front as well as in the back. With Mini Connected, you can use Spotify directly through the car so you don't have to use it through your phone. BMW says the Cooper D is the fastest accelerating car with a normal engine to emit under 100 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide. Apparently, it takes just 9.2 seconds to get to 62 miles an hour. Wow, that's like well quick, not. This three-cylinder turbo diesel actually feels pretty nippy and the trick computer says I'm averaging over 50 miles per gallon, which is that's not bad until you realise that BMW claim that it should be able to do 76 miles per gallon when fitted with this automatic gearbox. Another problem I have with this engine is it's a little bit noisy. I much prefer this car with the three-cylinder turbo petrol engine in the normal Cooper because it's revy nature just well it suits the Mini's character so much better and so does the manual gearbox now if you want more information on how this car is like to drive then click up there to watch our 360 degree video now the BMW Mini has always traded on the fact that just like the original Mini from the swinging 60s it's a spirited little thing to drive. It's a real lively little character. I mean, I love it. It just, it just enjoys being chucked at corners and it just grips and goes round them. It is a really fun car to drive. However, there has always been a problem with the Mini and that's the fact that it kind of always bounced down the road like a golf ball because the suspension, which makes it so fun and darty, also makes the ride really firm. Now, to counteract that, BMW has made this latest version of the Mini slightly softer, and you can even get it with optional adaptive dampers, which have a comfort mode. But still, yeah, you compare this car to its rivals, and it is on the firm side. Also, it's quite a noisy car to travel in. You do get quite a lot of tire roar just echoing around this square-shaped cabin, and quite a bit of wind whistle as well from these A-pillars up here. 
yes, it's, it's certainly not the most relaxing drive. So then, overall, how do I rate the Mini? Well, there really is nothing else quite like it. Okay, so the boot is tiny and the ride is very firm, but it's a great fun car to drive and it feels like a premium product. Now click there for more information and to find out the best deal you can get on a Mini at carwow.co.uk. Thanks for watching. Click over there for our group test video between the Mini, the DS3 and the Audi A1. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it and subscribe to our channel. Now, did you know that the record for the amount of people fitting into a Mini is 28?